Approaching Colorado by car from the east at first can seem quite boring. The bare brown plains seem to roll by endlessly outside your car window. But slowly, a shadow appears on the horizon. And then another, and another, and all at once, they come into view. One of the most majestic mountain ranges on the planet, the Rocky Mountains. Nestled within these towering peaks, about an hour north of the Colorado State Capitol, Denver, lies Rocky Mountain National Park, the cornerstone of everything these mountains stand for, including their history, geology, and wildlife. The Rocky Mountains have a lot to tell under their snow-capped peaks, and this is their story. The mountains themselves comprise a range of peaks over 2,700 miles long, spanning from Mexico to Canada, making the Rockies the longest mountain chain in the world. The mountains themselves were formed as a part of an uplifting of the Earth's crust around 70 million years ago, but many of the rocks found in the park, such as granite, are a lot older dating back to over a billion years. These mountains show the ever-changing process of geological movement, and because these peaks were formed relatively recently, geologically speaking, their average heights are a lot taller than other mountainous areas in the country, like the Appalachians in the east which formed around 480 million years ago, or the St. Francis Mountains in southeast Missouri whose granite, like that in the Rocky Mountains, dates back to over a billion years ago. Due to the towering behemoths at the park, there are many different ecosystems at different elevations across the mountains. We'll get a little more in depth with what kind of creatures inhabit these ecosystems a little later, but here's a quick description of each of them. At the highest altitudes of the Rocky Mountains sits the alpine ecosystem. Characterized by snow and barren rocks, not much life is able to survive here, and those creatures that do choose to make a living in this harsh environment are usually small. At a slightly lower elevation, between around 9,000 and 11,500 feet, lies the subalpine environment. Still prone to heavy snowfall, the subalpine environment serves as a transition from the peaks of the alpines to the environments below. Sparse trees populate subalpine terrain, and brave animals hunt and traverse the mountainous landscape. Within the lower elevations of the park, much more flora and fauna thrive in the habitat known as the Montan. This is the environment in which visitors enter the park, and some of the classic animals of the Rockies reside in this environment. Throughout all these diverse habitats roam humans, who have longed to explore the terrain of North Central Colorado since the end of the last ice age around 10,000 years ago, when the first peoples entered the mountains coming over from the Asian continent. After a few thousand years, Native American tribes like the Utes were the primary residents in the area, with occasional hunting raids by the Cheyenne, and eventually after European expansion, the Arapaho. Europeans would reach the Rockies around the 18th century, beginning with fur trappers and traders, then moving on to explorers like Stephen Long, who was the first person to see Long's Peak, the tallest peak in the park, which is named after him. He would be the famous explorer John Wesley Powell, along with the company who would actually summit the mountain around 40 years later. Seriously, is there any park this guy hasn't visited? <laughs> During the 1850s, a gold rush occurred in the Rockies, bringing hundreds of excited fellows out west, including Joel Estes, who created a ranch at the foothills of the mountains, and his ranch eventually became the modern-day community of Estes Park. With Colorado being established as a state in 1876, more people migrated west to live in cities like Denver and Colorado Springs, located along the eastern edge of the Rockies, and more people began to see the beauty of the Rocky Mountains, and began to campaign to have some of the wilderness protected from industrial interests. People like Enos Mills and James Grafton Rogers were some of the loudest voices at the beginning of the 20th century, who wanted the creation of a park in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, especially after the creation of other parks in the mountains farther north, such as Yellowstone and Glacier. After several years of lobbying in Congress and in the local area, Rocky Mountain National Park was established in 1915, becoming the ninth national park in the system, which would be organized into the National Park Service one year later in 1916. In the early years after the park was created, two major roads, Fall River Road and Trail Ridge Road, were constructed to wind their way through the mountains to connect the cities of Estes Park in the east and Grand Lake in the west. These roads were also the first roads to cross the Continental Divide in that area, and some of the first official automobile routes to cross the Continental Divide in general. Today, Trail Ridge Road is the main road that runs the park, having stood the test of time into the 21st century and beyond. Speaking of the 21st century, Rocky Mountain continues to develop relations across the United States and the globe in the modern age, having sister parks in Poland and the country Georgia. Let's turn our attention to some of the places visitors can go to at Rocky Mountain, and some of the animals and plants that can be found at those places. There are several visitor centers where you can start your journey in the National Park, including the Fall River, Beaver Meadows, and Marine Park visitor centers just west of Estes Park, and the Kawanichi Visitor Center located on the west end of the park near Grand Lake. In the middle of the park, at some of the highest elevations along the Trail Ridge Road, sits the Alpine Visitor Center, where visitors can get up close and personal with some of the harsh environments of the Alpine community mentioned earlier in the video. Hiking up to Long's Peak, or along the Tundra Community Trail, 
visitors can expect to see yellow-bellied marmots and, if they're lucky, small pika scrambling across the rocky terrain. Trekking to features such as Bear Lake or Lily Lake can offer up soaring ponderosa pine trees, elk, and birds of prey that nest along the upper reaches of the pines among the many hills and valleys in the park. One of the park's most popular animals is bighorn sheep, who are very seclusive and may only come out to mate in the fall, but if you see one, count yourself among the lucky. For the adventurous, the Continental Divide scenic trail runs through the park along the, you guessed it, Continental Divide, the lane that separates the flow of water to either the Pacific or the Atlantic Ocean. The trail clambers over some of the highest peaks in the park and requires months, if not years, of training to successfully tackle. Hear of the wonder. Come for the adventure. Stay for the beauty. If that's not a good tagline for Rocky Mountain National Park, I don't know what is. Everything about this majestic place harkens back to a time before man industrialized the earth, when nature truly reigned supreme, and adventure lurked just over the other side of Colorado Rocky Mountain Peak. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, this has been RAC Adventures covering Rocky Mountain National Park, briefly.